In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I have a special, special guest today. It is Damian Wilkins, and Damian is the general manager of Overtime Elite. And more importantly, we're just here to talk about some of the biggest misconceptions about overtime. I mean, there's so much going on, and so many people have comments and things to say that are totally inaccurate. So I just wanted to address those. Stay tuned. All right, big shout out to each and every person that's made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. And my guest today, like I mentioned in the opening, in the opening, is Damian Wilkins. Damian, how's it going? It's going, man. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for, for taking time. I know I was in Atlanta last week, and you guys had a crazy busy day. And uh, so we're doing it on on, on podcast. And I, I was hoping to get a live interview, but that's totally my fault. I didn't realize how, how busy you were. I knew you were busy, but I didn't realize you had so much going on. <laughs> well, we're trying to – we're running a league over here. Yeah, so. yep. So it's a lot every day for sure, but glad to take this time out to spend with you. All right, appreciate that. So for those that don't know, I mean, I know I'm a basketball junkie, but for those that don't know, like what is your, your background and how did you end up at OTE? Oh, man, background. Um, well, I played, uh, well, if I started in high school, <clears throat> played high school at St. John's at Prospect Hall. In mm -hmm. Frederick, Maryland, a prep school there, coached by Stu Vetter, who um, is a well-known high school basketball coach, won several national championships. Um, I graduated from Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida, and spent my senior year there with my dad, who was then playing for the Orlando Magic. Um, went on to college at NC State, transferred to the University of Georgia. Um, left there, started my NBA career um, in 2003. Um, after that, uh, working for the Players Association, NBA, the MBPA, um, in 2017, in May of 2017, um, you know, while I was there, obviously doing stuff in the player programs department and just, you know, working with them, you know, helping players with their careers, their post careers, um, career development type things. And then I got a call. Um, from from someone who was uh, close to the overtime elite you know, project that they were putting together at the time, um, and asked me, you know, would I bring those skills over to OTE? Um, and at that point, I didn't really know much about it, but it excited me, and they described it. Um, so, you know, I, I I jumped on board, and in my first year, I was um, what we call the dean of athlete culture and experience. Um, and then I was promoted to general manager and head of basketball after my first year, um, which is a huge promotion that I'm truly thankful for. Um, and, you know, now I'm here doing this thing. I know that was like a condensed version of, of your background. Um, yeah. In high school, who was your teammate? You, had, you and another guy, I can't think of who it was. Y'all had a dominant high school run in Orlando. It was another, it was like another five star on your team, right? I had a five star on my team in, in Maryland, not not in Orlando. I was the only five star on my team in Orlando. Okay. Um, Maryland, I, it was myself and Jason Cable. Okay. And we won a national championship there. We were USA Today national champs. We were the number one team in the country for two years. Um uh, uh so we were able to I was able to get me a national championship out of it. Um you know Stu Vetter again like I said amazing coach um i think probably one of my best coaches that i've had between him and lawrence frank and nate mcmillan stick out to me the most mm -hmm. um guys that just, just i think got the most out of me and was able to help develop in me a work ethic um you know that i that i took with me throughout my career and and and, and help prolong my career um as much as it did so i'm very thankful for that there's somebody that I'm thinking about that went to Dr. Phillips, and maybe I, I got my years mixed up. Did Darius Washington go there? 
Yeah, he went there. He was way after me. I was I was long gone. I'm, I'm much older than him. Then he played with somebody. I'm getting my years mixed up, man. You know, once you get older, all the years start to run together. Yes, they do. <laughs> so you you made an interesting career choice in a sense. Late in your career, you came back and played in the G League. And I remember that. And I was just thinking like, man, like what that it was. I thought it was interesting that you chose to, to finish up in the G League. What led to that decision? Uh, I wanted to keep playing and I wanted to continue to give myself an opportunity to play in the NBA. Could have went overseas, made a whole lot more money, but I just, that was just something that just wasn't at the time, like something that I could really do or felt like it was the right career choice for me. You know, I had kids um, here in Atlanta. So like, I wanted to be around my kids and my family. Um, you know, I wanted to stay, you know, stateside. And um, I wanted to spend some time with them while continuing my career. Um, I had a lot left in the tank at that point. So um, I just wanted to keep playing and give myself an opportunity to get back into the NBA. And that's what happened. Do you think that that like stint in the G League has prepared you a little bit for your role at Overtime Elite, even though the players are, I mean, obviously in the G League are a little bit older than the guys in overtime, but it's, it's definitely a step back from the NBA lifestyle. Do you think that prepared you a little bit for your role? Uh, I think a lot of things prepared me for this role, that being one of them, because I was able to kind of relate to some younger guys and build with them, mentor them, um, you know, help them understand professionalism and what, you know, uh, goes into being a professional basketball player, both on and off the court, helping them understand stuff like, you know, understanding your role, things of that nature. So I was really pumped about that. Um, actually, like I, I didn't look at it as a demotion like most people do. Um, because at the end of the day, we're still playing basketball on one of one of the largest stage stages in professional basketball at the time. So um, for me, it was just, it was refreshing to get back to playing. And I was able to go there and play really well. Um, you know, I had a, a staff of coaches while I was in the G League and D League uh, that was able to help me kind of get the most out of me again. And 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 I think pouring into those young guys really helped me as well. Um, just learning, like, where they come from, mm -hmm. right? Like, they, their mindset and things of that nature and the things that also hinder them. Um, and then just the overall experiences of playing in the different places that I played in helped me really – tap into you know all the needs of different players at different different levels of the game yeah i, I think that every nba team should have like a, a veteran exception where they have like a, a veteran on the team and even the g league have a guy that you know is after 35 that is still in good shape that knows how to be a pro to basically help prepare these guys for their next step and, and how to be professional but let's talk about ote and this is a question that I've been wanting to ask. I've, I've reached out to multiple people and we, I've had people talk about it, but what is the biggest misconception about OTE? Like there's so much chatter around it. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a high school league or it's, it's not going to survive. And, but what is the biggest misconception that people just don't realize? Um, honestly, like I don't know what the biggest one is. I think it's, it's subjective depending on who you ask. Mm -hmm. um, we hear a lot about, you know, our level of competition. We hear a lot about, you know, our league being small and, you know, playing the same teams. Um, we, we, we hear a lot of those things. And, you know, we hear a lot about guys that come here and then after the season ends, they go play on the AA, respective AAU teams and don't look the same. Um, you know, all those misconceptions, all of those are misconceptions. Like our competition level doesn't seem to, keep NBA scouts out of our building, right? Like we got guys, a number of guys, right? Like if you count the eight or nine guys who are signing professional basketball contracts somewhere um in the first two years of us being 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 here. Um you know, so uh, in in terms of our player development, right? Like and, and guys coming here and then not being the same people that they knew when they played AAU but the AAU game itself is much different than what we teach. We teach you how to play the game the right way at, at, at OTE. And, 
you know, a lot of times, as you know, if you watch basketball long enough, you know, the AAU circuit itself, like, I don't see a whole lot of great basketball being played. I see a lot of great individuality. Um, and, you know, the team game itself isn't, is, it, it's just not about that. Um, there's a lack of defense sometimes that happens in the AAU um, um, environment. Um, guys just, you know, come down and take 20, 30 shots a game. Um, you know, things of that nature. And, you know, our guys, once you come here and get taught to play the game the right way, like it's it's hard to really, I, w- I would say, stand out as much as you probably want to in, in that environment, knowing that for 10 months, eight to 10 months, you've been practicing the game the right way. Um, and, you know, you develop the chemistry with your teammates and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of misconceptions about it. But at the end of the day, I think the data speaks for itself in terms of how we develop our guys and, and where our guys are going when they leave here. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I've noticed is that you don't see guys in OT putting up ridiculous numbers. Like the Thompson Twins average, what, like 16 a game? So it's not like you see guys come in averaging 30 a game and their head and shoulders way above the, the competition. I want to ask Damien a few questions about overtime's scholarship option. But first, I want to talk to you about bird dogs. Because bird dogs are stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg and give you a truly sculpted look. And the bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. They fit way better than regular shorts because they are not made out of that stiff cotton that is very restrictive. And bird dog fixed the issue of having the the tight stiff cotton because they invented a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but it stretches so you get a way slimmer fit and you don't have to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs also uses an anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA and enter the promo code LockedOnNBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA you will get a free Yeti style tumbler. You will not want to take off your bird dogs. We promise you. Again, birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. Another question I wanted to ask you is about the difference between like the salary option and the OTE scholarship. And if yeah. you guys are are, are pivoting in, in the next year or so. I think, I think, well. The difference is in our first year, we didn't have um, an option to offer the scholarship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we, we talked and met with the NCAA after our first year and they granted us a scholarship option, which allowed us, allowed players to um, sign with us and still maintain that ability. Um, whereas in our first year, all the guys that we signed, signed pro contracts and that forced them to give up their college eligibility. Um, you know, so that rubbed people the wrong way. Um, and at the end of the day, people fear what they don't understand. So yeah. um, I totally get that. And, you know, our scholarship option allows guys to maintain their eligibility um, for college and, and to essentially come here and be um, for us to be um, to prep them, if you will, for whatever their next steps are. Um you know, I, I don't see a world where many guys will come here um, in the future and, and, and take the, the pro contract. And, you know, quite frankly, like we don't encourage them to. Um, but everyone is different. Everyone has different needs. Everyone's families has the, have different needs. And it's good that we can be a part of a, a system um, that allows optionality for these guys and give them put different paths on the table, put different routes, if you will, on, on the table for them to, to, to make that choice. I, I didn't know that until maybe a few months back. And then, and, and the reason I, I, I wanted to like dig a little bit more and find out was because you have a kid, Kanan Carlisle, that is going to Stanford. Like you just can't get into Stanford. Like you have to have the grades to get into Stanford. It's one of the hardest schools to get into. So can you tell me a little bit more about the, the education component at OTE, which is something that is never, ever talked about? Yeah, we have our OTE Academy 
Um, everything's accredited. Like Stanford has been on our campus several times. Many other schools have been on our campus several times. We work with compliance departments at schools all the time. Um, and they have no issues with our academic structure. Um, you know, we don't allow, we don't have our guys be in class seven hours a day. Um, they take four, you know, classes a day, four hours of class a day. It's mainly core classes that, um, so we're right into the meat and potatoes of things as opposed to, um, you know, what you would call the quote unquote normal school system where you're in class for seven hours a day doing probably taking classes that like you, you'll never really use. Um, right. And that's a part of development, right? Like that's a part of what we do in terms of accelerated development to, to, to not waste time and, but instead to spend our time wiser, um, you know, and more efficiently in, in trying to get these guys on the court as much as we can. Now, was it difficult to convince like the compliance directors that, that, um, you know, just that what you guys were doing was good enough to get guys eligible for school? Uh, no, it wasn't difficult. I think like, like we tell all of everyone, right. That we bring it in, like, just come and see it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the schools have interest in our guys. So naturally they came down, they will see it. They will see what we're doing. We will send them correspondence and paperwork about what we're doing in terms of our academics. And it, it's, it's all been approved. Again, we work with the NCAA wouldn't have granted us a scholarship option if we weren't compliant with them from an academic standpoint. Um, the fact that we have scholarships, the scholarship option right now granted to us from the NCAA tells, should tell everyone um, who has any critiques on our academic structure, everything they need to know. So um, we're excited about the ability to offer the scholarship path. Um, it obviously opens up the door for more recruiting. Um, you know, guys now know that they don't just have one option to be here. Um, and families, more importantly, understand that too. So. It's been really good for us. Now, what's a typical day like for a player in your program? A uh, typical day would be a guy come in in the morning around eight eight o'clock, have breakfast. Um, you know, has his weightlifting session for an hour, and then a home court workout, individual workout for an hour, a small break. Um, you know, shower, snack, go to class, get out of class, have another break for a couple of hours and then come back for, for practice, team practice and then a shooting workout after that. So it's pretty simple, um, you know, but again, we like to use our time wisely um, and be efficient in the things that we do. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a full day, but at the same time, like you said, it, it, it's efficient. Guys are getting their work in on and off the court. Now, if I'm a parent, let's say I'm a parent of an elite high school player what are what are the benefits um by choosing ote over just a regular high school or even a prep school uh I, I think the benefits again goes back to our accelerated development you know we focus a lot on building up your brand building up your body building up your skill on the basketball court um and then also again like just how efficient we are with time time management um you know we have a Pro habits, you know, we have pro habits curriculum where we teach guys about, you know, the education of agents, NIL structure, and all of those things. Um, we just everything that we do here is about development, both on and off the court, and then helping guys understand that, like, hey, sometimes it's not realistic for you to make it to the NBA, you know, right away. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have to go down a different path, and even if that path doesn't work, we want our guys to leave here. And, and have confidence that they can make it in life and be professional people, um, you know, and the, and, the, and, the, and the life doesn't have to stop just because basketball didn't work out. Um, for me, that's that's the most exciting part of it mm -hmm. uh, because those guys get lost if basketball doesn't work out for them. And whereas we just try to encourage all those things about, you know, being successful people and helping them, you know, reach their goals and, and know that, like, they can attain whatever it is that they want to attain outside of basketball. I like that. I, I think that's very beneficial because a lot of kids or just people aren't getting that. Once the ball stops bouncing, they don't know what's next. Another thing that that is, is, is 
I mean, it's news, but a lot of people haven't really talked about it at length, is that OTE players are now eligible to play in the McDonald's game. What does this mean for OTE recruiting? Uh, that means a lot because that was one of the biggest you know, criticisms that we had coming into this um, towards the end of this year with the situation with Rob Billingham. Um, you know, people were flabbergasted and, and so were we. Um, that he he wasn't able to play in that game. One of the best guards in the country. Obviously, he was, you know, someone who would have been playing in that game had he not come to OTE um, at the time that he came. So we fought for him, and we fought for the future of OTE and and its players and and its and the players in its league, um, because we we are essentially the same thing. Like there's no difference, you know, from that standpoint in terms of being compliant or eligible for the McDonald's game than any other school. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we sat with them, met with them several times, and then we came to a, um, an agreement to allow us, you know, OTE and his players to, to be eligible for the game. We even changed our schedule a little bit in terms of adding more, um, you know, games and, and tournaments and teams, not only to our league, but to our schedule um, to satisfy anything that McDonald's might have needed. Um, in that regard. So I'm thrilled about it. I'm happy for our players that they get the chance to do that. Yeah, I think that's huge. And I'm a big Rob fan. Like I was, If there's like 10 guys that I just want to watch, not even like wear like my evaluation cap, just as far as like pure entertainment, he's, he's one of the 10 players in the world, literally, that I just enjoy watching because his confidence is just off the charts. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA Finals because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. You heard that correct? $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. And there's no better place to bet on all NBA Finals action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and locked on. All right, I have two more questions for you. What are some of the unknown success stories to come out of OTE? And the first one that comes to mind for me is Dominic Barlow. There's no relation, but that is a success story that people aren't talking about. And for you, can you describe some other unknown success stories or even touch on a Dominic story? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, Dom came in here, obviously, like, as you know, like not, not, not well known at all, not ranked, not on anyone's draft board, but was able to still come in here and work his butt off and give himself an opportunity to play professional basketball. And he was able to sign a two-way deal with the um, San Antonio Spurs and then got, got, got minutes this season and played very well and he's played himself into a lot of money that, yeah. he, could, that he earned um, throughout the year. So um, that I think Jalen Martin is another guy who mm -hmm. I would still consider a success story. We don't know what his future holds right now, but that's a guy who came in here and got tremendously better um, over the time that he was here. Um, and he's given himself an opportunity to play professional basketball. Bryce Griggs, a guy who, came in very well known, um, but also very well known for a lot of the wrong reasons. And he came here, turned his situation around, um, refocused, um, and now he's on the path to play professional basketball. You know, we have guys like Alex R and Emmanuel Maldonado who came in here, you know, again, not very well known, um, but also was able to get on draft boards for, for next season and, you know, giving themselves an, an opportunity now to play professional basketball, um, you know, in Australia and, 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 and G League Ignite and all those things. So we're thrilled about that, happy about that. Um, Manny right now, Maldonado is playing in Puerto Rico in a, in a really good, respectable professional league. So yeah. um, him, he and John Ed Walker, another guy who's playing professional basketball in Puerto Rico. So, um, and Jai, Jai, Jai Smith, another guy who stuck on the G League team um, this past season in Sioux Falls. So um, 
there's a lot of success stories that go around here that people just don't really know about because they're so busy critiquing us and whatnot. But, you know, we, 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 we hear, we hear the rumblings and we hear all the things that people saying and we just keep, you know, producing, um, all these guys that that's, that's giving themselves a chance to, to really make money playing basketball. And John Montero, he's killing in the ACB. In the yeah, ACB. I didn't even mention. I didn't even yeah. mention. Yeah, John Montero is one of the best guards in the ACB right now, who is doing his thing. And you know, I think if you talk to him, he would give a lot of credit to, um, you know, OTE and 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 what we were able to help him accomplish. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big John fan. I first saw him a couple years ago. He doesn't pass the eye test, but I always tell people, look, just put some people in the crowd, nine other guys on the court, and he's going to be one of the best players on the floor. All right, last question. On draft night, when the Thompson Twins hear their name called by Adam Silver, what is this going to mean for OTE and your staff and all the time and effort and work that you put into the Thompson Twins? Like, what will that mean on draft night? Oh, it's going to mean, it's going to mean the world. Um, you know, that's, that's, this, this is big for us. Um, you know, you talk about two guys, you know, who are going to be off the board in the first 30 minutes of the draft. And, yeah. you know, that's big for our, our business. That's big for them. That's big for their family. Um, I'm happy for them. Um, you know, I can't wait to see that moment for them. Um, you know, and although they, that's going to be big for them, like the, the, the guys who, I want to see, you know, get their opportunities as well as Jay Gord, um, Bryce Griggs, you know, Jalen Martin. Seeing those guys also get an opportunity would mean, you know, to me would mean the world, um, you know, because they deserve it. Um, they're good enough, and 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 I just can't wait to 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 see what where where their where their paths lead them as well. Yeah, Jay Gord is Jazzy and Gortman. I had did a, a podcast and wrote an article about him as one of the five guys I was looking forward to seeing at the G League elite camp and he made me look good because he got invited to the NBA combine after such a strong performance and he's on the workout circuit right now so big props to you guys for playing a role in his development and again that's just the guy that is a success story that people just aren't really talking about well that wraps up this episode thank you Damien for coming on I know your schedule is pretty busy right now but thank you for coming on and Thank you, yeah, no, no problem. Yes. Just wanted to clear up some of the misconceptions and hear like and just hear it straight from someone that is in the trenches at OTE and explain what's going on because you know it's a new league and people don't really know what's going on and sometimes the just the stuff that's being said is just totally, totally false. So I just wanted to clear that up. But thank you to listener for making the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day, and we are out. Mm-hmm.